Is neurodivergence passed down from parents or caused by environment? Now imagine a child who's brilliantly creative. Their mind is firing on all cylinders with ideas and insights that leave adults in total awe. Despite this, they struggle to focus in school, experience sensory overload or communicate in ways that seem unconventional. This is the reality for many neurodivergent individuals, those whose brain function differently from what is considered typical. But here's the big question. Is neurodivergence such as ADHD, autism and dyslexia something passed down through our genes? Or could the environment play a pivotal role in shaping the way our brains develop? So let's dive deep into the fascinating debate of nature versus nurture when it comes to neurodivergence. Now remember, this is education mixed with entertainment. So with that being said, let's analyze this train of thought accordingly. So the term neurodivergence has gained popularity in recent years, encompassing a wide range of conditions where brain function differs from societal norm. This includes conditions such as autism spectrum disorder, ASD, ADHD, dyslexia and more. But how exactly does neurodivergence come to be? For decades, scientists, psychologists and geneticists have been exploring whether neurodivergent traits are inherited from parents or shaped by environmental factors. The answer may not be as straightforward as it seems. So we will break down the complex nature of neurodivergence and explore the roles of genetics, environment, and the intricate interplay between the two. Segment one, the genetic component of neurodivergence. So to start, let's look at the genetic aspect. Research has shown that many forms of neurodivergence tend to run in families. This suggests that genes may play a significant role. Studies in twins, particularly identical twins, have demonstrated that conditions like autism and ADHD have a strong hereditary component. For instance, if one identical twin has autism, there's a high chance, there's a high chance the other twin will also be on the spectrum. Similarly, ADHD shows high heritability, with research estimating that 70 to 80% of the variation in symptoms can be explained by genetic factors. Scientists have identified certain genes that appear to be associated with neurodivergent traits. However, no single gene determines whether someone will be neurodivergent. Instead, it's likely that multiple genes may contribute, interacting in very complex ways. But while genetics may lay the groundwork, the environment also has a major say in how these traits manifest. Segment two, the role of environmental factors. So while genetics provide a foundation, they don't act in isolation. The environment can significantly, the environment can significantly influence how neurodivergence manifests. Prenatal factors such as maternal health, exposure to toxins and stress levels during pregnancy have all been associated with an increased likelihood of neurodivergent outcomes. For instance, some studies suggest that exposure to high levels of air pollution during pregnancy may increase the risk of autism. Similarly, prenatal exposure to alcohol or certain medications can raise the chances of a child developing ADHD. Beyond the prenatal period, factors like early childhood nutrition, exposure to trauma and social environments also shape brain development and could exacerbate, they could exacerbate or mitigate neurodivergent traits. This doesn't mean that environmental factors cause neurodivergence on their own, but they can significantly impact how genetic predispositions unfold. Segment three, the epigenetic puzzle. So here's when things get really interesting. The concept of epigenetics. Epigenetics refers to how environmental factors can change the way genes are expressed without altering the underlying DNA sequence. In other words, environmental influences can turn certain genes on or off, shaping how an individual's genetic predispositions 
are realized. In the case of neurodivergence, certain environmental factors may trigger or amplify neurodivergent traits in individuals who are genetically predisposed. For example, a child who inherits genes associated with ADHD may be more likely to exhibit symptoms if they're exposed to high stress environments early in life. On the other hand, supportive and structured environments might help them manage or even minimize those traits. Epigenetics highlights the dynamic interaction between nature and nurture and how the environment can affect the expressions of genes related to neurodivergence. Section four, neuroplasticity and the developing brain. Let's zoom in on how the brain's development might further explain the emergence of neurodivergence. One key concept here is neuroplasticity, the brain's ability to recognize and form new connections in response to experiences. While neuroplasticity allows for learning and adaptation, it also means that early experiences can have a lasting impact on brain structure and funding and function. For neurodivergent individuals, the wiring, the wiring of their brains may differ from the typical population, either due to genetic factors, environmental influences, or both. Experiences like trauma, early neglect, or even overstimulation could shape the neural pathways in ways that amplify neurodivergent traits. Thus, while some neurodivergent traits may be present from birth, the brain's plasticity means that the environment still has the power to alter or reinforce these traits throughout life. Segment five, a neurodivergent traits evolutionary advantages. Now let's take a step back and ask a different question. Why do neurodivergent traits persist? If neurodivergence is genetically influenced, does it serve an evolutionary purpose? Some researchers, some researchers believe that traits associated with neurodivergence, such as heightened attention to detail in autism or the spontaneous creativity often seen in ADHD, may have offered environments in certain ancestral environments. For example, in prehistoric times, having an individual with a heightened ability to focus on specific tasks, like hunting or tool making, could have been invaluable. Similarly, individuals with ADHD, known for their tendency towards hyperactivity and quick thinking, might have thrived in environments where constant alertness and adaptability were crucial for survival. These theories suggest that neurodivergence might not be a flaw or a disorder, but rather a different set of cognitive strengths suited to various contexts. And that is a very powerful point. Segment six, the importance of a holistic perspective. So what's the answer to our original question? Is neurodivergence passed down from parents? Or is it caused by the environment? The answer, is probably both and more. Neurodivergence appears to be the result of a complex interplay between genetic predispositions and environmental influences with epigenetics and neuroplasticity further complicating the picture. What's clear is that no single factor can fully explain neurodivergence. Instead, it's essential to take a holistic view, recognizing that genetics, environment, and individual experiences all contribute to shaping the neurodivergent mind. So as we continue to understand the diversity of human brains, it's crucial to shift away from seeing neurodivergence as something that needs to be fixed and instead appreciate the unique perspectives, skills and insights that neurodivergent individuals bring to the world. Conclusion. In the end, neurodivergence reminds us. It reminds us that there is no one size fits all approach to understanding the human mind. Both nature and nurture play significant roles in the development of neurodivergent traits. As science evolves, so too does our understanding of how genes and environments interact in intricate ways. Whether passed down through generations or shaped by early life experiences, Neurodivergence is a testament, it's a testament to the incredible diversity of the human brain. 
So next time you encounter someone who thinks, learns or processes information differently, remember, those differences may be a combination of biology, environment and everything in between. And that diversity is something to be celebrated. And with that being said, I sincerely hope this video has provided value.